History plays a very important role. You can read a book a hundred times, but if your heart does not connect with the tragedy, then you will not benefit from it. Not too long after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu after the Khilafah was wrongfully given to those who did not deserve it and who were not appointed by Rasulullah, after the election process, they came to the door of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam in order to secure the allegiance of Banu Hashim. The narration state that a group of up to 4,000 men came to the door of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and they demanded that Amir al-Mu'mineen come out and pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. Of course, Amir al-Mu'mineen knew that he was the rightful successor to Rasulullah. And also narrations tell us that at that time, Amir al-Mu'mineen was busy with preparing the final copy of the Quran as he had heard it from Rasulullah in the order that he had taken it from Rasulullah. So he did not come out to uh, give allegiance to Abu Bakr at this time. And this is also narrated in, in the Ahlul Sunnah books of Hadith. They came, the army of men, leading them was Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he demanded from Fatima to Zahra that Ali ibn Abi Talib come out and pledge allegiance. And he said that if he does not come out, we will burn down this house. And they brought with them the uh, wood in order to burn down the house. They came out, some of them, they said that the daughter of the Prophet Fatima al-Zahra salam is in this home. He says, what in? So what if she is in the home? We will burn it down in order to secure the allegiance of Abu Bakr and narrations tell us that this is exactly what they did. They set fire to the home of Fatima al-Zahra, the home of the purest people, the closest people to Rasulullah When the group of attackers came to the door of Amir al-Mu'mineen, after setting fire to the door, this is where the great tragedy takes place. They kicked the door in. Fatima alayhi salam was caught between the wall and the door. And from the door there was a, a nail which was sticking out. And this nail stabbed her in her ribs. And they began to push her. They began to squeeze her between the door and the wall until they broke her rib. This also led to her miscarrying her infant, miscarrying her baby in her womb, Al-Muhassin or Al-Muhsin. Place of worship of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. When Fatima alayhi salam was on her deathbed, she had instructed Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam to prepare her and to bury her in the darkness of the night. And she instructed that no one attend except for a handful, a trusted few. Those who attended were, of course, Amir al-Mu'mineen himself, al-Hasan, al-Hussein, uh, 
Ammar ibn Yasir, Salman al-Muhammadi, and a couple of other loyal, close companions, she did not want to be buried in broad daylight. And she did not want her place of burial to be known either. Till today, we do not know exactly where Fatima Tazara is buried. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, a man who, according to all Muslims during the battle of Khaybar, lifted the gates of Khaybar with one hand, a job which 70 men combined could not do, did not find the strength to lift the lifeless body of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. After washing her pure body and preparing her for burial, he sat in, in the corner and he began to weep. As you can see, a nighttime burial where only a handful of people participated. <laughs> 